Good morning, everyone. Hello, this is Engineer Hussam. I am lecturer, design and manufacturing. And today, um, it's an honor to give a presentation about design for manufacturing. So the course learning outcomes. Uh, by the end of this presentation, students should be able to understand the definition of design for manufacturing and explain design for manufacturing principles. Let's start with a game. Please, I want you to scan this QR code and it will take you to a web page and then we will have a short game. The first game, what is design for manufacturing? So we have a drawing, I will, I will read with you, drawing that produce how and uh, produce to show how parts and function are manufactured before it's made. So it's a, like a workshop drawing, tell you how it's made. It's a production of good through the use of labor, machinery, tool, and biological or chemical process formulation. It's encompassed the ongoing process of business decision strategy that enable innovation and design product. It's a process of designing component or for ease of manufacturing at high quality product at lower cost. Let me see your answers. So I will stop now and check the correct answer. The correct answer is is process of designing component for ease of manufacturing high quality product at lower cost. So let's go to the definition and try to understand a little about it. It's a process of designing part of component or product for ease of manufacturing. So we are talking about design stage. So now we are at design stage, but our target is manufacturing. So that's why it's called design for manufacturing because we are designing parts or components or products for easy of manufacturing. We want our target to make manufacturing easy. Not only this, but we, to make parts are good, good quality parts with lower price. So we are focusing on manufacturing to make it good quality, easy to manufacture with lower price. To do this, we have to simplify, optimize, and refining the product design. So, what do you think the five principles of design for manufacturing? I will, I will try to make it easy for you. We are try, our target to work in design stage and to make the manufacturing easy. Okay, so we have elements, five elements that will help us in order to achieve our target. Can you describe or try to give me an idea what are the five elements? Okay, I'll stop you here and I will show you the element. The five principles of design for manufacturing are manufacturing process, product design, product material, service environment, and compliance and testing. Let's start exploring one by one. With regard to manufacturing process, the correct manufacturing process, it's very important for the product success. It's very important, it will save money and it will save you a lot of time. Let me give you an example. We have injection mold. We have 3D printer, additive manufacturing. A customer comes to you, he has 20 parts of plastic and he wants you to manufacture these 20 parts for him. So which process you are going to go with? Injection mold or 3D printer? Okay, I will give you some hints. He wants these 20 parts and he is, let's say the 20 parts, if you put it in the 3D printer, each part will, will be printed between 5 hours to 20 hours, okay? While in the injection mold, the 20 parts will be done within less than 30 seconds. 20 parts, less than 30 seconds. Let's say one minute you will get 20 parts. So which one you will choose? You might say injection mold. I will tell you again, the, the, the cost setup, the, the cost, the initial cost to make the injection mold is way more high. You need between 2,000 to $100,000 in order to make one injection mold. Not only this, the manufacturing time for injection mold between two to 10 weeks. So you might think about it. My recommendation is based on the quantity, how many quantity. If the client asks for 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 100,000, then I will go with injection mold. But for a few amounts, I will go with additive manufacturing. Same example will be applicable for rod manufacturing. Will you go with aluminum extrusion or lathe machine? Aluminum extrusion is better, of course, no waste, very fast, very good, but still you need to make dye in this case, and it's expensive. 
So depend on the quantity. So choosing the manufacturing. What is the second thing? Product design. Pro probably product design is one of the most important uh, items here, elements, in order to save time and money. But why product design is important? Let's look to this quiz here. If you have parts that you want to assemble, this part, a washer, and this plate, and put a nut or screw. And here you have this washer, but in this case, here we have shoulder that it's self-locating. Here it's floating. You have to try to align by your hand. Which one do you think it will save time when you have 100,000 parts need to be assembled? The part that the washer, you put it in the place and it will be assembled, or you need to make alignment by your hand. Choose, click on the screen, whatever is perfect or what is the correct answer. It's obviously this one is better. Another example like this one, which one will save you time? To have two screws for each part or to have one screw for each part, let's say you have 100,000 or 200,000 assembly, which one will save money and save time? So you can click on the screen to see this one is better. The third aspect is product material. And when you try to design the part, when you want to design the part, you have to think about many aspects, one of them, the material. Like, do, I, do the customer need the part to be colorful or want it to be transparent? What's the difference? It different, you might select different material. As an example, for colorful, you might say high density polyethylene. I want to make it for injection mold or polypropylene or PVC. While in the transparency, you have to see PET as an example. So the kilogram, the price for kilogram for PET is way more different than high density polyethylene. What about the uh, optical property? What about the surface texture? All these affect the time and the process while you are working in your parts. You have to ask yourself, what is the mechanical property? How strong is the part? Uh, what's the material, optical property, thermal property? Lots of questions it come to mind when you want to think about material. Number four is environment. Why environment is important? Can we look to the example down? As an example, this one. It's obvious this is the water, this is the beach, and this is made of plastic PVC, and here is part made and rusted. Imagine you have contract with municipality, with government, with any part or any entity, and after six months you get this part rusted. You will lose uh, reputation, you will lose money, maybe you will have uh, also complaints, and you will have a uh, lot of uh, problems with the customers. So we need to design part for the exact place that it should be allocated or fit in. I want part to be underwater, I have to make it resistant to water, high resistant, like stainless steel. I want part to be in a place that it, it has wind or dust. I have to think about this. Number five is compliance, compliance with testing. All the parts has to be approved and testing. I remember one example when uh, in Germany, they rejected some cars imported from China because the Chinese car, they didn't follow some standard of the uh, Germany. And this could be simple. Uh, thing like as an example they don't have heated uh, seat and in Germany they have very cold weather and they want the this one to be applied so following the standard and following the certificate and even check from authorized agency or third party is important design for manufacturing guideline in general as a total we have to reduce total number of parts, develop modular design, use standard component, design part for multifunctional, design part for multi-use, and there are others. Let's try to see how this game, it might show us some of them. Reduce total number of parts, why? It's less expensive than custom. If possible, your part should be assembled from the top interlock. The correct answer will be like this. Reduce the total number of parts, then I get fewer parts, mean fewer purchase, mean fewer inventory, mean handling, process. Use standard component, less expensive than custom made, availability and reliability. Maxim minimize assembly direction, assembly from the top, assembly from the right, assembly from the bottom. If possible, your part should be assembled from one direction only, ideally from the top. Reduce the number of fastener, the poles and fastener and washer, it will it will make the life of the assembly people very, very tough. Interlock or use clip together, snap fit. 
I finished this presentation for today. I like it. I hope you like it. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions?